Hey everyone, Cash here, bringing you another video from Madden 25. We've reached the end of Season 2. Last week we lost in the Super Bowl to the Packers, so now it's time for our second offseason. We're going to start things off with re-signing our players. we got quite a few guys that need to be re-signed. We're not going to get everyone. You take a look here at who we have looking to be re-signed. I'm going to try. we got the outside linebackers both wanting to be re-signed. Russell Allen played pretty well for us. He's a little bit cheaper. We're going to re-sign him. I think we might let Geno Hayes go. Chris Obanaya, he played great. We are going to get him back very cheap as well. And then we have a few rookie linemen that we signed to one-year deals. Undrafted rookies who are rated pretty well, so we're going to re-sign them for pretty cheap. Uh, Brandon Linder wants just 500000 a year, so We'll keep some depth for cheap. And then Vance Walker, we currently have only 2D tackles. So we're going to try and pick him, or excuse me, bring him back for three years. A million a year, that's not too bad either. So we'll increase that a little bit. They'd find, especially with last year, that you got to give them a little extra or they might get a little upset. And we have a lot of cap room this year. As you see there, $42 million in cap room. So we have enough to spend a little bit over. So you see there, we re-signed DJ Williams, bringing back one of the two tight ends that we have. Andrew Corliss, the other one, didn't play a whole lot, so we're not going to bring him back. Tracy Porter wasn't going to bring him back, but he only wants $900,000, so we are going to bring him back. Lawrence Jackson, our other lineman, defensive and left end, 83 overall, just 30 years old. Still got a couple good years out of him. We're going to re-sign him for pretty cheap. And then Geno Hayes, he doesn't want a whole lot, but at four years... I don't know if we want to stick that long into him, so I think we are just going to let him walk and see who else comes up in free agency that we kind of mess with this year, but do not end up offering him a contract. So you can see here everyone that we got offers to, Vance Walker rejected our offer, so we are going to roll with just two t D tackles for now. We are definitely going to hit that position in free agency as now let's take a look here before we advance at who retired and we did lose brad, lose brad meester he retired matt schaub retires you can see here ike taylor darren sproles nande asamoah retires d'angelo williams i guess he's decently old but that was a bit of a surprise stephen jackson retires robert mathis dwight freeney who i think he retired once already maybe last year came back and retired again brandon lloyd Vicente shanko and then the texans signed jason garrett as their new coach so that's what was happening there with the retirees. Now it's time for the free agent signings and going into this offseason, looking at the team as Meester retired. There's a few positions I think we really got to hit. As you see here, Colin Kaepernick is a free agent. I'm not sure how the 49ers let him go, but I do have a few positions that are areas of need. Starting off, we did let Cecil Shorts walk to free agency, so we are going to need a second starting wide receiver. We do have Mercedes Lewis at tight end, but we need a better tight end, backup tight end, possibly running two tight end sets. So we're going to look for a, another tight end. We need a new center now that Brad Meester retired, so we're going to go after a center. And then we let Charles Woodson go. He's pretty old, so we're going to look for a new starting free safety. And then also outside linebacker is another one. And here on the right side, I saw Vontez Burfitt. And this is a guy, 24 years old, 80 overall, not the best rated option out there, but for the price, I think he provides a great player at right side linebacker. And then moving to the centers, you see here, we got a couple pretty good options, Alex Mack or Ryan Wendell, but Wendell a lot cheaper than Mack, and he is a 94 overall. So we are going to give him an offer, see if we can pick him up. He would be a upgrade over the leaving Meester so we'll see if we can get him and then at free safety Raheem Moore is far and away the best option at free safety and isn't super expensive but we are going to give him a little extra more with him being our best option with Charles Woodson being the next best option we are going to try and get him overpaying possibly a little bit but got to make sure we get him as if we don't I'm not really sure who we're going to have playing free safety and then the t at the tight end we give an offer here to Jermaine Gresham, a very good receiving tight end, which with our offense throwing it a little bit more with Johnny Manziel, we want to have some passing or receiving tight end. So we're going to give Gresham an offer. He's pretty cheap. And then for wide receiver, as you see here, we got 
Wes Welker at the top, Des Bryant both want a lot of money, so I'm looking more down here towards Demarius Thomas, Daenerys Moore, Reggie Wayne on maybe a one-year offer. He is pretty old. And Jordy Nelson, as we're going to see here what Jordy Nelson wants, five years, 33. That's a decent amount of money for a 30-year-old wide receiver. Is a 90 overall, but does have great catching stats. We're going to take a look here at Daenerys Moore, more of a speed guy, five years, 22. For the 26-year-old, that's an 88 overall. That's pretty good, but he does have not quite as good of catch numbers. And then Demarius Thomas, as he wants 5 for 35, 27, 89 overall. But you see the stats. He's got the speed. He's got the catching ability. So I decided to give an offer to Demarius Thomas. So that's all the offers I made the first go-around with free agency. So we're going to advance, see who we got signed. And Demarius Thomas, apparently the price was right as we pick him up on our first try. You see everyone else who we have an offer on. See a lot of offers for Raheem Moore. See how those all kind of rank. So second go around, we're going to go through for the D-tackles. And I'm going to go back after Vance Walker. Again, I don't really like any of the other D-tackle options. We're only looking for backups. Vance Walker for the age and the overall. We're going to see if we can offer him a little more money, get him to come back. So... That is the only offer we make there. Actually, we did make one more offer. I think we're going to see here we did sign a backup middle linebacker, Mason Foster. He was pretty cheap. Not the best middle linebacker, but we needed some depth there at middle linebacker. So that is all that's going there. So we're going to advance now to the last week, and we're going to see here we do sign everyone. Mason Foster did not sign, but we did get Wendell. We did get Raheem Moore. We did get Vontez, Jermaine Gresham, Demarius Thomas, as we had already signed. So a very good haul, I think. We had a lot of cap room, so we were able to go out and get some big guys. As you're going to see here, Roddy White goes to the Chargers as we see some of the signings around the league. Brandon Browner on just a one-year contract to the Buccaneers. I'm surprised he had such a short deal. Tony Gonzalez came out of retirement. He signs. Geno Hayes ends up going to the Lumberjacks. Des Bryant signs a seven-year, $116 million contract with the Broncos. Michael Orr resigns with the Ravens. Reggie Wayne goes to the Saints. Mark Ingram resigns with the Saints. Let me see who else big here. Jordy Nelson goes to the Colts for 536. And then very surprising here as I'm scrolling through here, Tony Romo retires. So the Dallas Cowboys going to be looking for a new quarterback. Surprised to see him. He didn't come through the first set of retirees, but he's retiring. So now we're going to look at the scouting here before the draft. And I'm going to tell you right now, this draft does not look too good. There was probably about 12 wide receivers rated in the first round. So if we didn't pick up anybody in the free agency, we were going to look at wide receiver in the draft. But as I go through and kind of find some ratings on these guys, they do not look too good. Mike Evans, who probably would be my first choice, just a 70 catch. And then we're going to look at some other ones. Malcolm Mitchell from Georgia, maybe pick him up in the second round. We are picking at the end of the first, so uh, we're not really going to have a chance to get some, nobody too high. And then another option, although we did sign Jermaine Gresham with the kind of struggles at this wide receiver position in this class, we may go tight end. So we're going to look at Devin Funches, Eric Ebron, as they seem to have a little bit better looking stats. Not really though, I mean, as you go through here and, and look at some of the ratings for most of these players, it, I gotta say, seems like it's gonna be a lot worse of a class than last year. Last year we were able to get a lot of great players and I, I'm not sure why this class is so much worse. I don't know why it is so wide receiver heavy as we're gonna go back here, just one last check, Kenny Bell. 61 catch, that's kind of a deal breaker there. Malcolm Mitchell, let's see what his catch is. A C, that's a 76, so that's not bad, better than Mike Evans. And then we'll take a look here at the tight ends. Devin Funches, what is his? 84, so that is a strong possibility. Devin Funches, the tight end, as is, is he is a would be a, probably a upgrade over Jermaine Gresham. Not quite at a Mercedes Lewis level, but gives us the ability to play some two tight end sets, something like that. So we'll see how the draft breaks down before it starts. Let's take a look at our picks. We do not have a second round pick. We traded that one away. So we have a first, a third, and then one in each of the next of the rounds. I'm going to show you the entire first and second round. Josh Shirley, 
the unanimous number one overall goes number one to the Seahawks. Driscoll to the Cardinals. Telfair, the tight end, goes early to the Colts. Josh Watson, D tackle to the Bears. The Lumberbacks back to back D tackles as Gabe Wright goes to the Lumberjacks. First wide receiver off the board, Eli Rogers. He was the highest rated wide receiver. We got David Ash to the Rams as they look to replace Sam Bradford. Blake Sims to the Titans. Jackson Shipley to the Broncos. So they have Shipley. And they have Des Bryant, Jason Merrill, the first, another tight end, excuse me, off the board. And you see here, outside linebacker Adrian Hubbard, Jordan Hicks, as we have a run of outside linebackers. So nothing too surprising so far. Bruce Ellington, we're not really going to try and trade up at all. As I said, this class really seems like it's not too great. So no point wasting any picks, losing any future picks as... I hope next year's class is much better than this one. As you see here, I think that's the third or fourth tight end off the board so far in the first round. Very weird first round, and that definitely is is a lot of tight ends. As another one goes to the Lions, Quandre Diggs, I think that's the first cornerback off the board. Jordan Richards is short or strong safety, excuse me, off the board. Marcus Rush, defensive end to the Seahawks. So the Seahawks go defensive end with both of their first round picks. That's surprising. First halfback off the board, George Atkinson's. And then Michael Dyer right behind him. Tony Lippett from Michigan State goes to the Texans. Mike Evans. So we aren't even going to have the option of taking Mike Evans as he is going to go to the Falcons. He replaces Roddy White, Derek Thompson. So we have a run of wide receivers here as Josh Stewart goes. So it looks like we... And we'll see what we have here. Some run. We're going to see here if we can trade. And obviously, you see how bad this draft is. Only one team wants to dra trade up, and all they want is to swap first-rounders. Maybe we should have took that, but we'll see what we have here. Halfback, no one really there. Tight end, we got Devin Funches and Ebron. We'll see here the wide receivers, what we have available. Defensive end, Steven Tuitt. He is an option we could use. Another backup at line, but... In the first round, you're not really looking to draft a backup, so let's see what the wide receivers look like. We do have some options there, but nothing that really grabs me, so I think we are going to take tight end here, and it comes down between Funches and Ebron, and I think what is going to get me here is with Ebron's A or C catch, and we know Funches has an 84, and we are looking for that receiving type tight end. We are going to take Devin Funches, the tight end out of Michigan, with our first round pick so that is it for the first round as the Packers are going to take Steven to it so that end is gone now we start the second round a quarterback goes to the Browns CJ Brown and then we have a defensive end so as we go through here in the second round as I said no trading up here there is no one honestly no one else that as we see the normal kicker going in the second round there and then I think the Falcons trade up to take another wide receiver um, but there is really no one else that is, is really grabbing my attention that I might even think about trading up. Devin Gardner to the 49ers. Is he the replacement for Colin Kaepernick? We will have to see a very similar play style as he is definitely a scrambling QB. Jake Ryan, the Saints, take that. The outside linebacker, excuse me, from Michigan. As we go through these picks here in the middle of the second round, still not seeing anything crazy. I mean, did have the kicker going early as Devontae Freeman. I did consider taking a halfback at some point in this draft. We do have a pretty established guy in Derrick McFadden and a backup in Joy Bell, but maybe adding a fourth halfback. But looks like all the good ones are being taken. We'll see what ends up as Eric Ebron goes to the Seahawks. There. So the Seahawks, I think, having a pretty good draft so far. A little odd they took two defensive ends with their first-round picks, but... I will give you a look at some of the better, the teams with the better drafts as far as the rated players once this one is all done. So we're getting close to the end of the second round. We do not have a second round pick, so the Vikings picking in our place here. They take Ta Taylor Kelly, the QB. The Packers going to round out the second round with Bo Wallace. Oh no, they trade that to the Giants. The Giants take Bo Wallace. So now I'm going to advance here to our third round pick. And here we are in the third round. No real good halfbacks available. Wide receivers. Brandon Carter, a first round grade on him. See who else is available, though, if we want to go wide receiver here. Defensive end, fourth rounders. Nope, nobody really available there. Right end, there are some right defensive ends, but eh, not really a big need for us. Got an outside linebacker, nothing there. Fifth round grade for those. So it looks like 
at this point, with this bad of a draft, we kind of just got to go with best available, I think. And Brandon Carter is at the top of that list. It's the third round. He has a first round grade. So we are going to take Brandon Carter, 5'11", 162, out of Texas. Christian does have a similar play type to like an Ace Sanders. I think he's a speedy guy, very small. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see if he can push for playing time here as we go to the fourth round now. And still a lot of wide receivers available, a lot of defensive ends, right ends specifically. So we'll see here who we have. There's a lot of options. And again, as I said, not really a need, but with there's not really any other good options to take. You kind of got to go with best available. But here, I'm going to go down a little bit, go for Lorenzo Malden, the defensive end from Louisville. Just for some reason, he struck my fancy, I guess kind of at least knew who he was sort of so we're gonna go with him so now here we go to the fifth round and something I probably should have done in every round I don't I don't know if there was actually offers available but in the fifth we get offered a fourth rounder in next year's draft and I'm going to take this I decided I thought Minnesota might do worse than the Bears next season so I took Minnesota's offer with really no one as I said really good available we might as well move to getting some more picks in next year's draft hoping that next year's draft is better so we are going to trade out of that pick. And now here as we come in the sixth round, I remember we do need a defensive tackle. So I think we're going to end up taking just the best available. Carl Davis out of Iowa, 6'5", 312 pounds. Kind of going through each of them, but we're just going to go with the guy in the top of the list. Flip a coin really at this point. Haven't scouted any of these guys. So we'll see how he turns out as we will probably have to go into wider, into free agency excuse me, and pick up another defensive tackle as we just have three now. So now with our seventh round pick, and you see here still a lot of wide receivers available. And then one guy I actually did scout, Noah Spence, still there. I thought about taking him in the sixth round, but he's still available in the seventh, so we're just going to grab him. And that is it for the draft, a very uneventful not very exciting draft as now we go to the rookie signings and let's see how they turned out. Devin Funches is 73, Brandon Carter is 72, Malden is 75, so we hit gold there, but Carl Davis just a 59. He is probably going to struggle to make the team. Noah Spence is 68, not bad, so eh, a little iffy draft. And we're going to go through here, show you some of the better drafts from some of the teams. You see the Bills there, the Broncos. Jackson Shipley was a 75, Jeff Driscoll a 74, you see the Chiefs Atkinson just a 66, as you see a lot of these guys, Telfair the tight end was a 77, so he was the best tight end, Mike Evans just a 69, so good thing we didn't have a chance to take him, that kicker was an 80, so no surprise there that he was rated pretty high for going in the second round. And you see here the Packers, they had Steven Tewitt a 56, they had an exceptionally bad draft, that's why I left that one on there, they... I don't think they got anyone over a 65. And you see Josh Shirley, an 80 overall. He is going to be your best player in the draft. And the Seahawks as a whole had a very good draft. Ebron is a 71, so we did make the right choice taking Funches over him. But, I mean, really as a whole, this draft is horrible. One guy rated an 80 last year. I mean, there was at least a dozen or two dozen guys rated close to an 80, high 70s. But, yeah, just a bad draft. Very odd, but... That is it for the offseason. We have made it to the preseason. In, in the first game, we're going to be facing up against the Bengals. I'll make a few more free agent signings, get some depth in there, some position battles going for the preseason just so we can have some guys to cut. Uh, got to fill some need that D-tackle still and kind of look at the team. I'll give you a look at the depth chart and things like that next time as we go through all the preseason games. But... That is going to be it for the off season. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. I would really appreciate it and subscribe to see any future videos that I make. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.